All right, well, welcome back to Crowing FPV. Now, this is actually my third attempt to doing this video. Um, s main reason is because in the middle of doing my one of my other videos for this five inch long range quad, I ended up changing out the motors and making them a little bit faster spinning. Um, so to start off, I'm just gonna talk about the motors real quick. I am running the Emax Eco 2 2004 stator size and a 3000 kV speed. Now, before I was running a 2000, same motor, but 2000 kV and running it with 6S uh, or even with the lithium ion, it just didn't have quite the power. Um, my theory behind that was uh, running with a 2000, I could possibly get away with running 6S and running 4S lithium ions, um, but that was wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, it turned out to just not work the way I wanted it to work. So I put the 3000 KVs on there and I'm not running 6S on it anymore. I'm running just strictly lithium ions and 4S and it flies fantastic. It flies the way that I want it to fly. So this is the quad here. And as you've seen in my last two videos, I mentioned it and even flew with it in my previous video. And um, it flies fantastic and it flew decent when I was running a 6S. It just didn't quite have the speed or the pep. Um, and a lot of that has to do with just, again, the motors, but, uh, this is a very, very lightweight quad, uh, as it sits right here, right now, uh, it, it weighs at about 259, uh, grams, which is pretty, pretty lightweight. Uh, the, the build on it is actually really, really simple. I don't use, uh, anything other than DJI for my radio link and for my video. So I didn't have to add on like crossfire or anything like that. All right, let's turn this on. Make sure it's zeroed out and on grams, good. So I'm gonna throw this on there. Make sure it's not touching anything else. Uh, it's not on grams, Jesus. There you go, grams. Uh, let me add the extra couple pieces here. There we go. So you're looking at 259 grams. So now this isn't at that sub 250 mark. Now this frame is designed to be a sub 250 frame, but the way I have it set up, it actually isn't, which is fine. Uh, it's still significantly lighter than your basic five inch freestyle, which is sitting at about 378 grams. So it's actually a very, very simple build. Um, extremely simple build. Pretty much all I'm using is a Foxier Reaper uh, all in one. It's the Foxier Reaper uh, F745 45 amp all in one uh, flight controller and ESC. Now this comes pre-loaded with Blue Jay for the ESC, which is which is a great thing. And then all I have is just my Vista in there and my GPS. That, that's that's it. That's, I mean, that's all that there is to this. Um, I don't add Crossfire or anything like that. I use uh, all DJI that so I didn't have to solder anything else up now if you look here this right here is pretty much LED race wire now I wanted just regular race wire but I couldn't find any everybody was out of stock well get FPV sells their branded uh, race wire LEDs and I think it's like seven dollars for all four of them so I grabbed them up and used them and that's because I'm running the six inch arms and the motor wires were not long enough to make it. So I made sure I grabbed those to put those in the middle. And that is really it. Um, it's really all there is to it. It's a very simple build. And you know, a lot of times simple is better. For the GPS, I am using a Bitan, Bishian, Bishian, whatever, BN220. And I actually wrapped the cord, the wiring on the bottom here, as you can see, the wiring is actually wrapped in, oh, Maybe you can see it here. Um, I wrapped it in a copper foil tape just to kind of shield it a little bit more from any of the other electronics. Uh, that does help out with uh, GPS signal, receiving uh, satellites, so on and so forth. Now, the real star of the show is this frame. This frame is, you can download everything for this frame, the frame included, and different types of uh, setups like five inch uh, Truex, five inch Deadcat, six inch Truex, and six inch Deadcat. 
This happens to be six inch dead cat. And it's called the Wu Tank. And it's made by uh, Le Drone Club is the name of it on Thingiverse. And on top of giving you all the files you need to have this cut, it also has all of the TPU prints that you need, that, that you could ever want, except, except for the GPS holder. The GPS holder here, I actually ended up using a uh, this exact same GPS holder that goes on to the Flywoo Explorer 4 inches because everything lines up perfectly and it works fine. So I didn't see a, a reason to actually go out and redesign something that's already been made. So this is actually from the uh, Flywoo uh, Explorer 4 inch long range on the back here. And I am today going to put this up finally and see just how long I can fly it for. That's the goal for today for this video. Now I have flown this and I've, I've gotten, I don't know, 10 minutes or so out of a lithium ion and it flies fantastic, but I never got a chance to fully fly it because I crashed it and ended up wrecking a prop and I didn't have my handy little uh, iFixit kit that has a 1.3 millimeter uh, bit. I only had a 1.5 and these happen to be running on a 1.3 millimeter, which is weird, but that's what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna throw it up in the air and I'm gonna I'm gonna fly it with a full-on GoPro Hero 9 battery and everything with a uh, Flywoo uh, 3000 mAh lithium-ion battery. All right, so it's like 37, 38 degrees out, sunny and a little breezy, so it's a little nippy out. Um, and like a dumbass, I left my battery bag out in my truck overnight and the batteries are a little cold, so. Um, it should be fine. No, it's lithium ion. It's not as it's not as affected by temperature as greatly as a lithium a lipo will be. So anyway, these are the batteries. They're just 4S 6, uh, 18650s. Uh, it's made by uh, Flywoo. It's their 3000 mAh pack, and they run off XT30. And XT30 is what I put on here because that's what I wanted this to do from the get go. So. Let's get this up in the air and see how long it'll fly for. For whatever reason, my battery is saying that it's at 3.5 volts. I just tested it. Now it's saying 4 volts. Okay. Anyway, um, I just tested it before I even put it on, and it said it was at 99% charge. Um, not sure what's going on with that. So we'll see what we can get out of this battery. I flew it for a minute already, but we're gonna just start it right now and just see what kind of flight time we get. Now my uh, GoPro, um, battery, I'm having battery issues today. It's really embarrassing. Normally I don't have these type of issues, but I am. Um, my GoPro happens to have none of the like eight batteries that I have for it. None of them are charged. I thought I'd have at least one. So we're gonna have to go with DVR off the DJI, which is fun. At least that way it'll show you how it, you know, how it flies. So I'm at about half throttle and it's windy, breezy, I should say. Um, and I'm doing about 80 kilometers an hour. Let's avoid that Karen over there with her dog. So my, my goal with this quad was not for speed. Speed is not the key to what I was aiming for out of this quad. Some speed, yes, but longer flying time um, and even long range if I want it to, but I just, I want it to be nice and smooth flying. I want to be able to go up and fly for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and get some nice cinematic footage, you know, tree surfing. I live in a flat state, so I don't have mountains to surf. So next, that's the next best thing, trees except in the winter. And you can see that wind just buffeting me around. Now, um, I opted to go with tri-blades over uh, bi-blades because generally I find that the bi-blades are more efficient, yes, but I don't know, they don't give you as smooth of a flight and a little less, a little less power. I think a nice, good 
tri-blade for this setup is actually better. So I'm down to 3.2 volts. Um, I think I need to go back and redo, recharge these batteries. I think that has a lot to do with it because there's no way I should be, I mean, I know I can bring this down to 2.5 volts um, per the manufacturer, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of time I would get. I'm at three minutes and 30 seconds right this second. And let's see my current draw right now. Let's push this into the wind. I'm doing 60 kilometers an hour into the wind and about 20 to 22 amp draw. Away from the wind, or with the wind, um, I am doing 90 kilometers an hour at 16 amps. So you can see how the wind is. I'm now at 4 minutes 30 seconds and 3.1 volts. If I do a little roll there, shits and giggles. Now this isn't going to power loop. Um, it's not my rates and my tune is not set up for that. I mean, I'm sure I probably could, but it'd be ugly with a lithium ion. Five minutes, 30 seconds, three volts. And it feels like my throttle, in order to maintain the speed that I want, I got to keep pushing my throttle up even more and more. I'm probably sitting at about 80% throttle right this second on the stick. Down to 2.9 volts. I hear people talking. I have no idea which way I'm standing right now. Okay. There's people over here. I'm still at three volts. I'm at seven and a half minutes. Keep in mind, I did not start with a full battery, which I thought I was. Now, you know, that could have been because of the cold temperature. So I might have to redo this as a second video with a battery that's fully charged and not left out in my truck overnight in 30 degree weather. All right, coming up on eight and a half minutes. I'm sitting at 2.8 volts, still maintaining that 70 to 80 kilometer an hour when I'm not flying into the wind and about 60 when I'm flying into the wind. What I'm probably gonna do is stop this at about 10 minutes. Oh, I'm hitting at 2.5 volts, so it's time to bring this in. So, 10 minutes. Flight time. Well, nine and a half. But then I had that initial flight. Yeah, I don't want to destroy this battery. These things are not cheap. All right, so like a dumb dick that I am, uh, leaving these batteries out overnight probably did affect it a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, when I checked it on my tester um, for lithium ion, it came up as like 99%. And um, once I started flying, it was like immediately down to 3.5. So I, I think the, the cold did have something to do with that. And whatever anyway so i started at pretty much 3.5 and i flew it to 2.6 2.5 per cell um it's actually a little bit higher now it was about um what was it 10.3 volts total out of the battery which you can bring these lithium ions down to uh you can bring you can bring them down to uh pretty much uh 2.5 volts per cell um i, I guess i'm gonna have to add another video to this and do it with a lithium ion pack that's fully charged uh, or make sure it's fully charged and not sitting in my truck overnight. But anyway, um, I got probably right around about 10 minutes. Um, my first flight when I just kind of circled around was about a minute and then I landed it and then uh, I checked, double checked the battery and whatnot. And then I flew it again for about nine minutes and 40 seconds, roughly. And that's with the full-on GoPro on there. So, yeah. This battery's getting warmer and warmer as I hold it. Weird. 
Or maybe it's just my hands. Yeah, my hands are cold, so. It's warming my hands up real nice. Yeah, cool. All right. So, if this was fully charged and wasn't cold and all that fun stuff, um, getting it up there at, you know, what, the 4.2 volts, 4.1 volts, uh, good charge, healthy charge, healthy battery. Um, I'm willing to bet I'd be probably be pushing that, uh, that 20 minute mark out of these batteries, uh, which is great. Uh, it's fantastic. But e even, even still, even if it's only 15 minutes, uh, even 15 minutes, that's plenty of time to do what I want to do with this. And as you can see from the DVR footage, it was actually pretty smooth. Now it is breezy out today. So that does have a little bit to, uh, a little bit of an effect on that video but when you're running a gopro and you stabilize it and stuff like that you won't see any of that so it actually does fly pretty damn smooth and it wouldn't be flying quite as smooth if i were to be running uh by blades or even if i was running like my four inches my four inch quads like my hex copter and stuff like that uh they just they, they really get affected by the wind really really i mean really easily and my hex copter which is a very fun flying quad and it does fly for a very long time and it's very efficient flyer with a full GoPro. Um, it just doesn't quite get the speed that I get out of this. Um, I would say that one is running at what, about 60? Where this is easily doing 80 roughly, you know? So it's a little bit faster so you can get a little bit, you can cover more ground and you can get a little bit better of a, of a flying cinematic effect at those higher speeds. Now, to be fair, if I really want something that's faster and I want something that's still flies very, very well, um, I would just run this on a 6S battery, um, get the three, I don't know, up to roughly five minutes flight time on it and this is just a five inch uh freestyle designed quad with uh the peanut butter and jelly a little bit uh they don't have quite as steep of a pitch to them so they're a little bit more smoother flying uh props and it gives it a nice decent cinematic look so yeah that is my five inch long range now um i, I don't really have anywhere around here that that i can put it up in the air and really just let it stretch its legs and fly long distance i i would love to find some place around here where i can do that and i'll be i'll be looking for it just to find it because i do want to take one of these and just let it go straight as far as i possibly can um for fun and we'll see what happens with that uh when i do find something someplace like that but in the meantime thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video